Hello friends, I am at the park today, sitting at a park bench with my computer here. Ta-da! And I'm kind of answering emails and just getting some work done because it is such a beautiful day out. It's nice and cool and I just wanted to be outside, but I definitely needed to answer some email and stuff. So thank goodness for tethering because I'm out here able to do that. However, <laughs> that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is a question that I have come across um, again because I wanted to make a video about this particular question a few weeks ago and I never did. So I am going to make a video about it now. It is a question about shyness, in case you can't tell from the title of this video. And it's from Craig. I think it's an incredibly good question because it's something that I struggled with and still struggle with and definitely something that I think there's probably a lot more of us introverts out there. So without further ado to the question. The question is, hi Snapchick, I am a student photographer. I have a question for your next Q&A. My next unit involves lots of portrait photography. Do you have any tips for dealing with being nervous meeting new people as a photographer? Any general hints or tips for portrait photography? Non-studio based. Many thanks, Craig. Um, yeah, I'm shy. <laughs> <laughs> that might not be something that everybody knows about me. I am able to talk to you all in the camera relatively easily these days. It wasn't always that easy. And I have not always been um, even able to talk to strangers, if you will. So let's start out with a little bit of my background in, in shyness and I'll tell you a story about me being mortified because I was so shy. And then some of the tips that I have found to be helpful for me. And then I will tell you a story about uh, recently when I was able to put some of these tips into use and realized how far I've come. Um, okay, so I took some notes here in case you see me uh, looking over here. I'm looking at my computer because I took my notes for like the general things that, <laughs> that I wanted to talk to you about which is kind of how I get through these videos is I take notes beforehand. I'm like, okay, I want to say this, this, and this, and it helps me to talk to everybody. So anyway, um, let's start with the I'm so shy portion. And that is that I have struggled with being shy forever. Uh, when I was a kid, um, I, interestingly enough, was a dancer. I danced ballet for a long time. It's what I wanted to be when I grew up. I was a cheerleader, I know, don't laugh. I was captain of the cheerleaders in high school, aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I was able to do all of that somehow without any sort of fear at all. And I think it was because I was in a group. I, you know, I had danced for so long since I was like three years old. So for some reason, performances like that were never a problem for me. Talking to people, however, was a major problem for me. Through high school, I had a huge oh my gosh it was terrible to give presentations through college it was terrible to give presentations my major was art history where you don't have to give a lot of presentations but I did change up my major many times through college and one of my majors was business it became my minor and um, I did have to give presentations in those classes and it was horrific <laughs> and then out of college I got put into training positions in my first couple of jobs for some reason. Um, so the first one was over the phone. So that was pretty easy. It was a good soft way for me to get better at talking to people. Uh, the presentations were terrible. I said the same thing every time. They were horribly boring. So there's that. And then in my next job, it was in person and I was really scared before I started them, but I did know my stuff. Um, I think, I mean, that's why I got put into the position of being a trainer. I, I knew what I was doing. I was good at it. So they wanted me to train other people. So I was training these larger classes of people in this particular thing. This wasn't about photography. This was when I was still working in offices doing, you know, businessy stuff. Um, wah, wah. <laughs> before I liberated myself. Um, or before you guys liberated me, actually, because I wouldn't be able to be doing this if it wasn't for you all. So anyway, um, 
I was able to get through it, right? But then I decided to start my MBA program several years out of college. So I was in my mid 20s, later mid 20s, and I got into my very first MBA class and the very first night, first class of anything, and the teacher says, hi, we're all gonna give presentations tonight. They're all gonna be two minute presentations. You need to stay as close to two minutes as you can. And you aren't gonna know the topic until I call your name and you have to go up to the front and I'm gonna make up a topic for you. Okay, I started with like the cold sweats right away because I was already scared, but I, I was trying to psych myself into it because I was already in this training position at work and I was doing okay. Um, anyway. I did terribly. It was horrible, mortifying. The class had to help me. They were like, they took pity on me and people are like calling out like questions for me to answer about this topic because I froze. I was petrified. Um, I cannot explain enough how, how just bad it was. Uh, incidentally, the topic was high heels because I used to wear high heels all of the time, every single day. And that day, of course, I was wearing high heels. I went to class straight from work and yeah, I was dressed in my work clothes. So the teacher's like, high heels is your topic. You would think that I would be able to talk about that, you know, for a couple of minutes because I actually had quite the passion for my shoes. But yeah, I couldn't <laughs> because I was mortified. I, I just, I was so scared. So anyway, that was a, a long, long-winded story to tell you just how shy I was. So I hope you understand that you are in good company, Craig, and anyone else out there who's shy and struggles with talking to people in taking pictures. Um, at that point, I had, I had begun taking photos, but I just, I'm not sure how I managed to get through it. I just don't think, I wasn't very good with talking with people at that point um, with photography. And um, I had done a lot of assisting, which makes things, what, a thousand times easier, a million times easier, because you're not the one really communicating with um, the client so much as the main photographer is, and you just kind of do what they're, you know, what they tell you to do. Uh, so anyway. That's where I was. So now let me tell you kind of how I have gone beyond that to uh, be able to fake it, <laughs> to be able to actually be a little bit better at, at uh, talking to people and um, having conversations with my portrait clients and everybody else, because this is a life skill, not just a photography skill. So the first thing I have written down here is get to know your gear so you are not anxious about it. So that's something that if you know your gear if you are you know how to work your camera inside and out you understand exposure how to get the look that you want you know in any given situation not to say that you aren't going to need to you know do some trial and error but you know what you're doing with your gear and with how to get a particular look that you want in general that's gonna be one last thing that you have to think about. If you aren't nervous about your technicals, if those are rock solid, you're gonna be able to focus on, the, on defeating those nerves that you have with talking to people. Um, and, and that goes for, for any, kind of, any kind of situation that you're in with photography. I mean, anything, as long as you know your gear, you're gonna be able to fall back on that and that won't suffer because you're anxious. Um, have a plan for your photo shoot is my next note. And that is, it kind of goes hand in hand with knowing your gear, right? If you kind of have a plan for what you're gonna do, that's one last thing that you have to worry about or think about when you're already anxious and worked up inside. For me, when I would get anxious, when I would talk to people, and still, when I get anxious, when I talk to people, um, I tend to forget what it is that I wanted to do. And in the beginning, afterwards, I would forget, oh, I wanted X, Y, and Z. And I remember after, oh wow, I remember, I just thought of this right now, after a particular portrait shoot with um, a senior, a sen this guy was a senior in high school, and these were his senior portraits here in the US. Uh, we, 
oftentimes when you're about to graduate high school, you get this big portrait shoot done and they're like, you know, it's a big exciting thing. A lot of times they go in your yearbook. And I was doing this senior portrait shoot for a young man and I totally, you know, I, I didn't totally, you know, mess up the whole thing. I, there were a lot of photos that were fine, but they didn't meet my expectations and I was, I was disappointed in the shoot. There were a lot of things that I had wanted to do that I didn't, or things that when I was looking at the photos afterwards, I wish I had done differently. Um, you know, luckily they were all in focus. You know, the, the, the technicals were fine. It's just that I didn't meet what I wanted to do. And, and I, I still remember that now. It's funny, I still remember that feeling in my stomach, like, oh shoot, you know, I didn't, I didn't hit it out of the ballpark. Um, so anyway, having a plan, knowing your gear, understanding that you're gonna to have to do some trial and error with your settings sometimes. Sometimes your plan is gonna change a little bit, but as long as you kind of have an idea, if you can go out and do recon at a location, like Craig was saying that he's doing non-studio based portrait photography. Um, if you can go to the location and kind of get some ideas, know the time of day that's best, things like that, um, you're, you're gonna be able to focus on your nerves. The next thing I have here is practice on a friend or family member. And I sure did that. Um, and I suggest that to everybody <laughs> that asks me how to get better at photography in general. If, if you have someone that you're comfortable with, practice with them. And it feels silly, you know, at the time, especially um, I've, had, I've had friends that I've asked to come to the door like you don't know me and I'm going to pretend like I don't know you and that this is the first time that we're meeting and that I'm going to be taking your portraits and I've run through the whole thing with someone that I know but pretending like I didn't know them and it's kind of fun and it's you feel kind of silly but it's a good way to practice it's a good way to practice your your small talk you know and and how to um, how to talk with the person while you're also taking pictures um, if that's your thing. Maybe it's not, but um, if it is. And then that kind of leads into the next note that I have is practice talking to people. If you practice just talking to people in general at the grocery store was kind of the thing that I did the most or at any kind of store that I was shopping at, um, I would talk to, I started out by talking to whoever the cashier was at the grocery store or at the, the shop, you know, whatever, wherever I was. I practiced by saying, hi, how are you? Or I would compliment them on something. Just one line to kind of force myself to talk to someone that I didn't know. And after doing that so much, it has become a habit. It's become a lot easier. And that particular thing where I've just asked, how are you, or come up with a compliment or just one line about the weather, anything like that, I found that to be particularly helpful and directly applicable to portrait photography. Because if you can compliment someone, if you can talk about the weather, anything, it's gonna kind of loosen the person up and, and create a little bit of a connection between the two of you. Um, the next thing I have is pretend, fake it till you make it. Man, that's what I do. I pretend. I pretend that I am outgoing. I pretend that I, you know, have the same sparkling personality outside as I have inside <laughs> or that, that I perceive that I have inside and I fake it and it kind of works. It kind of works. If you pretend like you're someone who isn't shy, you can kind of convince yourself almost, and you will convince other people if you practice it enough. But truly believe it. Don't think like, oh, I'm really shy. No, seriously, fake it. Fake it until you make it. Pretend like you're not that uh, shy person, and no one's going to know that you really are the shy person. So I know that sounds a little bit silly to just pretend, but pretend. Pretend you're someone else that isn't so shy. Um, okay, so those are my tips. Those are my tips on becoming less shy. Um, and I'm sorry if you hear any background noise because I am at the park. Uh, and there's kids running all over the place because it's a beautiful day out and their, you know, mommies and daddies are very nice to bring them out to the park. Anyway, so here's my last story that I will close with. 
and um, explain why it helped me understand that I've gotten a lot better at talking to people and being less shy. So I recently did a live streamed panel for B&H Photo, and it was when the Nikon D850 was released. And it was a huge honor, and when they asked me to do it, I was, my literally my first thought was, no. <laughs> because, like, I can't do that. I'm shy. And then I won't be able to take notes beforehand. And like I said, I take notes before my videos. And, you know, I, my, my thoughts will get all scrambled and I won't be able to, to express myself. And then afterwards, I'll think of all the things that I should have said because that happens every time. And every time I like, you know, want to give a presentation or, or if I were to make a video without notes, there would be things left unsaid as my brain gets scrambled. Um, but I forced myself to take a breath and that to tell myself this was a great opportunity and that I needed to do it because I really wanted to do it. And I did. It's in New York City. It's with these super cool New York City people. I was able to use the camera the day before for a few hours and work with a model. And before I went out there and, and as I'm arriving and, and meeting everyone, I'm thinking, holy moly, these people are so cool, and I'm just this YouTube person from Arizona who takes a lot of pictures and likes to go to the Grand Canyon and hike, and, and these people just seemed so confident and cool, and yeah, I was nervous, to say the least, especially to work with this model who was just she just seemed so cool and unaffected by the whole thing you know she just she was just so cool <laughs> cool not like hip but cool like uh not anxious at all cool calm and collected so i fell back on everything that i knew i went back to these tips and i said look i know my stuff lee i know you know your stuff <laughs> and i studied up on the camera the night before and I, I didn't really know where I was gonna be taking photos, so I wasn't able to like go do recon on that, but uh, I was able to look at the camera stuff. And I know Nikon cameras, I've used them for how many years now? A bajillion, <laughs> and it feels like a bajillion. So I know what's going on with them. And I knew what to expect from the camera with regard to like how it works. And I just needed to see how it performed really and how many reviews have I done on cameras when I only had the camera for a week you know I, I, I know what to look for so I was able to fall back on those basics and get the job done and then the next day when I did the panel I said the same thing to myself oh my gosh if you guys saw that did you see who I was on the panel with the moderator was incredible he was so good at his job he could just talk and talk and he was fascinating and then speaking of fascinating the two other photographers that were on the panel with me were incredible and oh so experienced and cool and you know again I was in this situation where I'm like I just don't feel good enough <laughs> you know but I did okay, you know? I was able to talk about the camera just like I was supposed to and my experience, and I was able to fall back on all of those things that I knew and use my skills where I've just, you know, faked being not shy until I wasn't shy. So anyway, that was a bit of a long-winded story, but I look back on the experience now and say, pat myself on the back, good job, because I did, I was able to realize all that I have worked for. Um, and you know, it was just a live stream panel. It wasn't any, you know, super big deal really, but it was a big deal to me because the whole situation um, reminded me that I've, I've grown. So Craig, I hope that helps. And everyone else out there who is shy, I hope that helps. And if you want to talk it out with me, 
let me know because I'd be happy to help you with bringing you out of your shell. Um, and that's it, everybody. Thanks for listening, and I will talk to you soon.